is heavy. This is the most weight I've lifted for a while. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's looking really bad. So a few years ago, we noticed that the study plant that we have, Melasma lorina, it's also called Laurel Sumac, is dying back heavily in the areas surrounding campus. And so it's normally an incredibly hardy plant, very drought tolerant, can survive in really extreme conditions. And so we wondered why this plant that we originally thought was invincible started to die back. So as we started to look into it, we realized that there's a fungal pathogen that has infected the plant as a result of water stress in the unprecedented drought that we're, that we're seeing here. So what'd you find about transport in the areas of living tissue? Um, the water transport in the living tissue was better than this canker and then dead tissue region. Um, but then again, this fungus could move down the water transport vessels in the plant and then decrease water transport mm -hmm. here. Um, and then still, we are even in the living tissue here, our control, our well-irrigated plants are doing far better than these plants here. Mm -hmm. When you get above this point, all of this recent death, and then this has died probably last summer. This died this fall. And this will be next if the fungus grows down and blocks the xylem for uh, these greens. This research is important because there's a major conservation side of this that's going on. What we're seeing here is unprecedented drought in California. And so we're looking at the effects of that drought, looking at the water resources that are becoming increasingly less available and what it actually means for life, both here on this campus and throughout these mountains. We'll dig up these roots that have this distinct red color We'll put them under water so that we don't introduce air bubbles into the water vessels that could pull the water up from the water table. We'll cut them and then we take them into the lab and we test the water transport and see if there is any physical blockage that's occurring in the roots. It's important for students to start doing research early on because they're able to engage with a new kind of learning. They move out of high school and they get into the college area and they realize that science is more than just passive learning, that we can engage with the subjects that we're, that we're researching. We can contribute to the scientific community. And the earlier that students can get involved with that, the better we can get at it. And then and the more we can contribute to that. Well, let's see if we can do it here. There we go. Pepperdine gives you such a unique uh, research experience that um, the project is yours and you fully focus on it. Whereas uh, in other schools, maybe you'd be assisting other people or um, having to discover what you can do on your own. Whereas at Pepperdine, uh, everyone really f pushes you to, um, to your full potential and helps you come up with a research project that you're, uh, you're very interested in. If students, if they are passionate about science, if science is what they want to be doing, then they should actively be participating in doing science. Um, and then here at Pepperdine, through CERB and through Dr. Davis, uh, I have been able to do that. So this is our LICOR gas exchange system. Uh, it allows us to assess the health of the plant by monitoring its photosynthesis rates. I'm very excited that freshmen have the opportunity to get involved in research the first semester that they're here. There aren't many schools that offer that opportunity, and to have the ability to come right into college and get engaged with research alongside a mentor that's going to guide you along the way is really great, both for the school to improve the research that we're doing here, and then we're going to be able to send these students out into the scientific community where they can contribute even more.